Like most vegetable gardeners, my wife and I love having an annual garden because there are so many delicious veggies that we look forward to every year, and there are still many more that we haven't even tried yet. It is also pretty fun to start them from seed and care for them throughout their entire life cycle, and it can be quite a challenge to keep them safe and healthy, which can be good for your gardening skills, but also occasionally frustrating to your personal happiness. We will never stop growing our favorite annuals, but in this video, I'd like to talk about how we're going to start incorporating more perennial fruits and vegetables into our garden to increase our food production without adding a lot more work for ourselves. Growing perennials is an essential part of establishing a long-lasting, healthy ecosystem right in your own backyard. And depending on where you live, if you look out in nature, you'll see hundreds, if not thousands, of different plant, animal, and insect species all living there. If you're in a cold climate, like we are in Zone 5B, you'll see annual herbaceous plants that die back every winter, while plenty of trees and shrubs continue providing food and habitat for the local wildlife. We need to try to recreate this in our own yard to some degree because a greater diversity of life leads to a healthier and more productive garden. So the term food forest has become quite popular these days, and it refers to an edible, perennial-based polyculture that is inspired by a natural ecosystem that you would find in a real forest. In a food forest, every component serves multiple functions. Uh, it all takes care of itself, all the nutrients, and resources are primarily recycled within the system. And there's very little input required from the gardener aside from putting all the pieces near each other so they can be one big happy family. So that last part is what I want to go over today. We need to start coming up with designs for our new food forest that we're going to start planting out over the next couple of months. Establishing a food forest is a long-term project and we will be enjoying the literal fruits of our labor for many years. Most of the hard work has already been done because it requires quite a bit of research and planning before we can even plant anything. But once we get it set up, it should be able to take care of itself with very little input from us. We got a massive haul of free wood chips last fall, so I laid down a thick layer over the whole area where we want to set up our food forest. Even when the soil has been frozen in the raised beds and in other parts of the yard, the soil underneath all these wood chips has mostly remained soft and workable. Now that the weather is starting to warm up, I'm finding earthworms working through it, improving its texture and fertility. Don't worry, I'm only doing this for observation. I prefer to maintain a no-dig, no-till garden as much as possible. Alright, let's get to the design. First off, let's pretend it's already spring, so this looks a little less dreary. Now this polyculture is going to be based around fruit trees, often called a fruit tree guild. We've already ordered two dwarf peach trees, a Red Haven and an Alberta variety, and those are supposed to be shipped to us around the time they're ready to plant in Zone 5B. These are both self-pollinating, but having two trees can supposedly increase yields. Also, these ripen at different times, so we'll have a much longer harvest. Around the base of the peach trees, we're going to plant garlic because that should deter wood borers and other pests from attacking the young trees. Next, we'll need to add something to attract pollinators and gather nutrients for fertilizer. It should be no surprise that we're going to go with the MVP of permaculturists everywhere, comfrey. This is my favorite plant that we haven't grown yet because it pulls up nutrients from deep in the soil and stores them in its leaves. Simply chopping and dropping the leaves of this plant will greatly improve soil fertility over the next few years. After that, we should definitely add a good nitrogen fixer to help out the new trees as they get started, so we're going to plant wild lupin, a native to the Midwestern United States. This will attract native butterflies and other insects, and when it goes to seed, it will provide food for other wildlife. Now we need more things that we can eat too. Basil is another good companion for a peach tree because it repels pests. Borage is a tasty salad ingredient as well as an insectary plant and another nutrient accumulator. Wild strawberries are a good ground cover and a delectable snack for us and our animal friends. We'll just have to see what we can physically fit into this space. This is a pretty large area, so we'll certainly need to break it up a little bit. I'd like to have a meandering path going through the middle with a few keyhole branch paths extending out to the sides to provide access to everything. 
We can add more perennials, self-sowing annuals, and insectary plants throughout this area. We already have a few more native flower species in mind, plus I'd like to try sweet potatoes, strawberries, sea kale, asparagus, and maybe even a blueberry bush, though it may be tricky to provide that with its preferred soil pH around 4.5 while being interplanted with everything else. This area here is closest to the kitchen door, so that may be a good spot to reserve for herbs and more salad greens. We really do have a lot of options, so we'll just have to see how it goes. We may not even be able to fill this whole space this year, and that's okay. It's good to start small until you feel confident with what you can manage. Overall, I'd like this area to take care of itself as much as possible. So everything that we are going to plant here in the new area, is just a part of what makes a healthy food forest. We also have to consider everything that is already growing in our yard. On the small scale, we have things that are often considered weeds like dandelions and lamb's quarters and white clover. But if these come up in the new area, I won't mind at all because we'll just have more things that we can throw into our salads or use them as green mulch to continue improving fertility throughout the whole garden. And then on the large end of the scale, we do have two mature maple trees growing back here. And for right now, they're providing an overhead canopy, habitat for wildlife, and a boatload of autumn leaves every year. And I say for now because I've done more research on these and I'm quite certain that they are a silver maple. Some of you out there may already know why that could be a potential problem for us. Because silver maples have very shallow root systems they can fall over easily in high winds. The wood also decays quickly, so when animals make homes in the trees, the branches can rot out from the inside and fall off the tree pretty easily. That's exactly what happened with this tree already, and I see signs that it could happen again soon with the other tree. Now, it should go without saying that I'm all for rabbits and squirrels making homes in the trees. And I really don't have any personal problem with the silver maple itself. The issue is that I don't think it was such a good idea to use these trees for landscaping close to a house or anything else of value. So these neighborhoods were all built in the early 70s and they were all planted with silver maple. And at this point, all these trees are starting to fall apart. We had a big storm about two years ago that took down half of one of our neighbor's trees and luckily it fell right between the houses, didn't cause any damage, and no one was hurt, but we might not be so lucky next time. So I hate to say it, but they're kind of becoming a liability, and I think we're just going to have to replace them. At least we'd be able to get a lot of uh, free wood to use for setting up some Google culture beds. If you don't know about those, uh, I encourage you to look that up. I'll have to talk about that more in a separate video, but there are many good options out there for us to plant here instead. We could find something that is a native and can still provide overhead canopy and habitat and provide us with tons of free leaf mulch. Other than that, we really don't have much else growing on our property. So we're just gonna have to keep adding more native trees and shrubs, grasses, wildflowers, all to attract the local wildlife and insects to our yard. So this is just the start of my design process on this. So I really look forward to making this a reality and I hope you'll come back for future videos as we start bringing this all to life. So thank you very much for watching. If this was helpful to you in some way, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time.